afternoon all. How are we all doing? <clears throat> Hello, Julio and everybody else who I've just, uh, I can't see at the top of the screen because I just started a poll and now it's made my chat disappear. Evil Fletch, there's somebody above Julio, I can't see who it is. Danny, Kennedy, Mumo, Mayor, Virginia, Mark, Yoko, David, Senji. This is a new thing, this poll thing, by the way. Um, <clears throat> Gregors, Gina, Ryan, afternoon. 75% of people think we should short Euro Swiss after what the Swiss franc did. Dangerous. 67 people now. 71. Oh, look, it's fluctuating. They're not sure, are they? Not sure. So uh, Euro Swiss, big extension today, 150 ADR. This move on the Swiss franc that I said was probably going to get underway out of the propulsion move seems to be happening. Uh, I didn't get in on it at all. Um, so interesting. We'll see what happens. Afternoon, monkey. 62% say yes now. Mm, interesting. Should we or shouldn't we? So, um, yeah, we'll have a look at the news and everything. So this afternoon, we are going to be watching what happens with uh, the uh, consumer confidence figures at 2 o'clock. Um, this is the only news we've got today. Not a lot of news at the moment this week. It's a very light news week. Um, this is coming out too, so we'll see if that moves the uh, US dollar. Uh, main news really this week is the CPI figure tomorrow for the Aussie. Uh, so that's going to be your main market moving event this week, potentially. And obviously CAD, uh, GDP and unemployment tomorrow afternoon, which will be on for as well. Uh, th sorry, Thursday afternoon, which will be on for as well. That's the main news event tomorrow. So we'll see if we get any movement off of this this afternoon, but I'm not convinced. We will see. Afternoon, Evans. I'd like to have found a long instead, but I didn't. No, I couldn't really get in. <clears throat> I said in the live room the other day, this was... Um, I wouldn't want to short this. Uh, it's more of a buy. I think the Swiss franc will continue to weaken, but we have had a big hit on ADR on Euro Swiss today, and it is running out of steam up there. So there is a potential for a quick short play, even if it's going to continue um, from where we are at the moment. Uh, I just don't really want to get into a position on it, but um, this candle, I think, is going to get me in anyway. We will see. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Uh, I'm biased since I'm already short for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Afternoon, John. It's time. Uh, so news overnight. Uh, Japanese again coming out and saying they are open to uh, anything to do with FX fluctuations. Suzuki closely monitoring currency fluctuations with a strong sense of urgency. Declines to comment on FX intervention. Rapid foreign exchange movement is undesirable. The usual stuff. They are still watching this uh, US dollar yen like a hawk. Uh, I am short US yen and short euro yen. Um, <clears throat> we haven't gone anywhere since we got back up into this zone, which is the 150 to uh, 152 area, which is the last previous two intervention levels. So they are watching the Japanese. They have said now three days on the trot, do not push us any further. And the market has said exactly, well, done exactly what they said. So, uh, yeah, interesting. So everyone wants, 75% of you want to short the Euro Swiss. Fine, let's do it. I'm in, sure. Let's see what happens. I'm not getting greedy. Uh, in fact, I'd be happy with that. So uh, I'm targeting about 30-odd pips, just over half an ADR. I'll take that. Um, but very, very extended. We just had a reverse alert on M5. Uh, 15 is just giving you a reverse alert as well, so I'm getting in short. And, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get a little pullback on it today on this leg, but I'm not convinced. We will see. But you guys said that, not me. You said 75% of you, 77% of you now said we should be short on it. Do what you tell me to. Uh, quick question. Uh, I did see the video on your VPS setup. Uh, I, if I only wanted to manual trade on the VPS, would I still need to have either RSI or ADR turned on? No. no. That 
will auto trade ADR or RSI. If you just take, hit the manual button now and auto trading is turned off for RSI, that's for initial entries. Your initial entry on ADR or, or RSI is this. Yeah. If those are turned off, it will still do additional entries, exits, drawdown control, and everything on the trades that are running that you take with your manual buttons. Should have clarified that, obviously. But you see, this is the trouble. To me, it's all really obvious because I've built the thing. But from the other side of the screen, it's difficult to know what people understand from it, which obviously, uh, yeah. But that, yeah. So if you hit the sell button like I have now, and on my VPS on Euro Swiss, If I had this set to false, yeah, it's still going to do everything. It just will not take the initial entry based on these. But if there's trades open, it will still um, it will still manage that position. Afternoon, John. Uh, no, I've already said that. <clears throat> uh, I'm only looking to manual trade on my main portal, but wanted the EA to manage the trades for me. Yeah, so that's exactly it. It, you, the other option, you know, if you, you can test it all yourself. But, I mean, if you if you say, you know, uh, I want to use a RSI, put RSI at 99 and 1, yeah, it will never take a trade. It's never it's never in the history of mankind hit 99 or 1 that I'm aware of. So set that up, and it will basically never, ever get into an initial entry, but it still trades on the buttons. Uh, afternoon ago, sir. Nice little scalp on that US dollar Swiss. Yeah, I'm in short on US dollar Swiss at the moment. Uh, just taking another trade on that. Um, looking to get out on a retest of the propulsion. So I'm hoping we get some uh, nice negative news on the consumer confidence this afternoon. Would be good. Uh, right, so that's all the news we've had today with Japan. Um, they are monitoring FX movements. Um, if the US news comes out as positive, 81% of you now want to short Euro Swiss. Are you mad? Uh, so yeah, if the news comes out as positive, that's going to rally the US dollar yen and the Japanese are watching. So, always watching. So that could come down. Um, Man came out this, after, uh, uh, this morning as well and said uh, the markets are perhaps a bit too complacent about how long the Bank of England will hold rates, i.e. you guys seem to think that we're not going to drop them before the US. Uh, there could be a possibility of them dropping before June. I read into that anyway. Um, market hasn't made much uh, impact on the pound today. So we've had a little bit of negative movement off of it, off of what he said. Um, but nothing particularly uh, drastic, as you can see. So uh, that was the other news this morning on Financial Juice. Other than that, we've had some US news on core durable goods, which doesn't do anything. Uh, and that's it. So that's it for news today, basically. Um, we've got five minutes until the news comes out. Uh, we'll look through the ADRs. So it's um, Swiss-based again. Yeah, so obviously you can see on the ADR dashboard, we've got the... Uh, oh, there's a video coming out this afternoon, by the way, at 3 o'clock, 3.30, being auto-released. Um, on that ADR analysis that I was doing, yeah. So I've done the analysis. So I've re I'm releasing the video... At, 3.30 this afternoon, um, which will auto go out. So watch that um, based on ADR analysis, which ADR is best to use. So Aussie dollar Swiss, CAD Swiss, Euro Swiss, Pound Swiss, New Zealand Swiss, and US Swiss. It's all about the Swiss. So the Swiss franc this morning um, has had a, another negative run off the back of yesterday's negative run off the back of the Swiss rates. Um, so all potential ADR reversals. Aussie Swiss literally tapped into ADR and bounced. CAD Swiss is up there at 125, also up uh, at a resistance. So potentially we might get a pushback off of that level. Uh, it looks like it is at the moment. Euro Swiss, obviously I've just shorted that. Um, I'm not going to hold this for long. If this, uh, if this continues, I will get out of it today. Um, but we'll see. Pound Swiss um, up at uh, ADR, which is just within the uh, high of the news event as well. So, you know, there's a potential for this Swiss franc to power up at some point, I think, but we will see. Uh, new Zealand dollar Swiss, short. 
and US dollar Swiss I'm already in, but that is just tapped into ADR as well. So ADR extensions on all Swiss franc pairs today. So looking for short term pullback, if it's going to continue on its rally up or this could be the highs. Uh, so bear with me one sec. I've got a guy coming around to pick something up this afternoon. Three o'clock. Uh, sorry, I've just sold um, some dip bars, you know, like you dip bars, exercise equipment. Bought them for my son for Christmas. I think he's used them twice. So they're going. They take up a lot of room. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Uh, da -da 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 non trading news major bridge collapse in Baltimore. I know that was cool, wasn't it? Well, not cool, obviously, for the people in Baltimore that can't now get across that river, but yeah. That was a hell of a uh, big uh, event, wasn't it? And ship crashing into a bridge. Doesn't happen every day, does it? Aussie New Zealand, you can look at that. Uh, I'm sure Aussie New Zealand uh, It's coming down nicely. Obviously, because I scaled out, yeah, so I uh, I did some drawdown control. So obviously, as soon as I did the drawdown control, it went, oh, Lee's done drawdown control. Yeah, let's go the way he said. Always, always, always happens when you do drawdown control. As soon as you do the drawdown control, like clockwork, within an hour or so, it goes, yeah, got you. Always the case. So I'm short on that. Nice reversal, just gone in and a retest. So, uh, good move starting to the downside. Um, I've got a long way to go until I can get out of that, but uh, good looking short at the minute. Um, we'll look at the RSIs in a sec. Uh, the news is about to come out in 45 seconds. We'll watch Euro US. Let's see how we get on. So there's quite a few RSI extensions today as well. Um, Euro Swiss again is an 80 RSI. So um, <clears throat> the EA was going to trigger me into this anyway. Um, today so uh, CAD Swiss obviously is another opportunity for a short um, off of RSI extended and embedded on the hourly or extended on the hourly rather um, we've also got the pound Swiss and New Zealand Swiss all extended on the hourly uh, RSIs as well so uh, pound Swiss I've just got into as well there we go there's the news Wow, that's a big one. Well, they're not interested in that, are they? Uh, consumer confidence figure, uh, I suspect, has come out at 106.9 or thereabouts. It's pending. Let's have a look over here. Oh, there we go. Uh, 104.7. Um, so it is down. So that is negative US. Um, market not really that interested in it by the looks of things at the moment. But that will be um, <clears throat> potentially negative US. So that's not going to help the US dollar yen intervention move help me because i'm short on it but um obviously if that rallied dramatically to the upside obviously that would get the japanese involved in pushing it back down again so <clears throat> not a big move off the back of that um so i just need to check my exposure on the swiss i do not want to get into four swiss francs Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to stick a stop loss on that pound Swiss up there. It's not uh, a lot. I've banked pound US dollar this morning. Um, so that was the ADR extension. Uh, sorry, the RSI extension. I think it might have been an ADR as well from uh, Friday. So out of that one this morning. That was basically a TP hit uh, this morning. So I put my TP there, which was just shy of that support resistance level there. 
Um, I don't want, I just don't want that much exposure on the, on the Swiss franc. So uh, I've put a stop up there, which is about $150. But if it does work out, fantastic. They are all very, very, very stretched. Um, CAD Swiss has just got me in as well. Just about. Just going to go for a quick one-to-one -one sort of scalp play on that Swiss franc. Um, <clears throat> I put my Swisses on long only for a while since the rate change. Yeah, it's a sticky short. It is a sticky short, but it is also very, very, very extended. Uh, so there is a good chance it will uh, pull back on this leg. I still think the Swiss is going to be weak moving forward, um, but obviously to move forward, it needs to pull back. So it's how far it pulls back, which is why I'm, as you can see, pretty tight on the uh, TPs on these. Just want to get in and out quick. Half an ADR, that sort of thing. Broker probably, again. Um <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with those euros. So all the Swiss francs basically extended on RSIs, as you can see, Aussie Swiss, CAD Swiss, uh, Swiss yen it's extended to the downside, although I would not want to be longing that one because the yen is probably going to power up more than the Swiss franc. Uh, if we look at that Swiss yen, so that's extended to the downside. Um, so obviously it's a long opportunity, but if that yen does get an intervention move, there's it's just going to collapse. So, yes, if the Swiss franc is strong, um, it will move up. Obviously, if the yen is weak, that'll be fine. But what we're anticipating is weakness on the Swiss franc and strength on the yen. Yeah, so it's much more of a short. I'd be more interested in getting in there to go short in that direction. Um, Euro Swiss, obviously, we've looked at. That's massively extended above the 80 level. Uh, the pound Swiss extended. Um, so I've just got in on that one as well. So there's your RSI extension there. That's coming down quite nicely and quite quick, actually. Um, New Zealand dollar Swiss extended ADR hit RSI extension. So again, there's a good chance of a pullback on this leg, but I wouldn't get too aggressive with your TPs. Um, and US dollar Swiss, obviously, I am already short on it. So just watch your exposure on the Swiss. Um, there's no point in getting overexposed on it, which is kind of why I was just flicking over to look at what my exposure is. I've got four longs. It's a little bit too rich. So I'm going to take two of those off, um, the CAD Swiss and the Pound Swiss. They've got just putting stop losses on them. Um, looks like the Swiss is actually powering up a little bit, so they'll probably work out by the looks of things, but I do not want to get aggressive on them, on the Swissy. So nice little move going there. So let's see what happens uh, with the US, see if there's any more movement. Uh, market not really reacting to this move on the US dollar at all. No. Nothing exciting. Afternoon, Neo. Um, so that's kind of all the analysis for this afternoon. That's all the RSIs covered. Um, there's not many. They're all Swiss franc related. The only thing that's moved is the Swissy. We're not expecting huge movement this week because we have got a very, very light week news of uh, news week. After last week's manic news, um, it's, you know, a very, very busy, uh, a very busy week is followed by a very quiet week. So what we will probably do this week is undo a portion of those moves that we had last week, which we seem to be doing at the moment. Um, it is the end of the quarter this week as well. So Thursday is the last trading day this quarter, uh, last full trading day this quarter. That uh, is not a bank holiday everywhere else. The US is still open, but um, <laughs> so there is potential for a lot of moves to start to come in. So we will either get a quiet week because they undid all the moves they wanted to last week, or we will get that end of month, end of quarter rally um, or dump, whichever way they need to go. So it could well still be 
that we get a lot of volatility coming in, a lot of ADRs. So if you see stuff hitting ADRs this week, um, it could well be that they are just the start of moves which will continue. Um, it's just unwinding positions, basically, to say they can get paid. Same as everybody else in any kind of industry that works on commission, like sales industries, yeah, banking, you get paid a commission based on performance. So when you have a portfolio that you're looking after, whether it be a pension fund, for, a pension fund portfolio, uh, a speculative FX portfolio, whatever it is, you're going to be paid on profits. Profits are reported monthly and quarterly, quarterly being the big bonuses. That's when you tend to get the positions unraveling. So just a lot of movement to get to points, basically, where targets are hit. Shareholder expectations need to be met, that sort of stuff. So we quite often do get final week in the quarter, big, strong rallies, but it isn't always the case. So it's just a case if you have to see what happens. So those are your uh, ADRs. We've got some weeklies already hit. We're only on Tuesday. Um, obviously, uh, you can see this one here. Um, that's 82, which is the weekly range for the Aussie dollar Swiss. So we've already hit that and it's bouncing off nicely off of ADR, coming down beautifully. Uh, we've got weekly here on the CAD Swiss. CAD Swiss weekly range is 76. We are 81. Let me just check. I did actually change that ADR back. 10. Yeah. I've been mucking about with ADR numbers, so I just wanted to check. Let's check the indicator as well, make sure I've got the right. Yeah, it's set to 10. Um, uh, so, yeah, CAD Swiss, that's just started to come off. Uh, Euro Swiss is now again extended. So, this is the uh, second week we've had a weekly range hit on this 125. So, that's a pretty good looking short, I think, for a pullback. So, I like the look of that one at the moment, but I'd be wary about holding it long term. We'll see what happens. Um, pound Swiss, again, that's starting to come down nicely. So there's your weekly range here. Weekly range on that is 132. That is 138. So we are starting to pull back. We've done our weekly range, a little bit of a pullback, potentially underway on that one. So we'll see if we get some continuation strength on this Swiss franc this afternoon. It'd be nice to just bank a little bit, scalpy type moves on Swissy. Um, has anybody got any pairs specifically they want to have a look at? Uh, if you have, let me know. Um, I will quickly go through the results of the ADR analysis uh, while everybody's here. Let's trying to find spreadsheets. Um, so at three o'clock this afternoon, 3.30, I've, I've done a video this morning, which is basically going through the ADR results. When I was doing the video, I kind of realized if you're not in the live room, you probably wouldn't understand much of what I said. So I've tried to extrapolate on what ADR is and stuff, but it's probably a little bit nonsensical to most people that are watching it that don't know what I do. So um, <clears throat> I basically put together... Um, a video which goes through the analysis results. So I'll quickly cover them while we're in here um, because obviously you guys know what I was doing. So it would probably make more sense to you, but the video will be out later anyway. Uh, CAD yen, you can have a look at CAD yen. Short everything yen. Yeah, everything against the yen, short only. Wouldn't long anything against, so no longs against the yen. You want to be buying the yen. And as you can only trade XXX JPY, yeah, you need to be shorting everything that is a yen pair, basically, because the yen is going to power up. And if it doesn't power up, it will be powered up. It just will be powered up. That's my thoughts on it anyway. Uh, I've got an aggressive on the Aussie New Zealand. Uh, yeah, I'm not aggressive on it at the moment. Um, I could do with the Aussie news coming out bad for CPI, put it that way. There's a good chance it's, it's, this one, that's, uh, the CPI on the Aussie is a bit of a difficult one. Um, they're forecasting it's going to rise. Um, everybody else's CPI seems to be dropping a little bit quicker. So uh, I get the feeling we might get a 3.4 on that. However, 
I'm not sure a 3.4 is going to be enough because that is what we are at at the moment. So even though they are forecasting it to go up, if it comes out at 3.4, it means it hasn't moved, which is neither bullish nor bearish. So we need a 3.3 or lower, ideally. But because it's a yearly figure, you don't usually get a 0.2 deviation. 0.1 is normally, but we do occasionally get 0.2 deviations. But uh, I think that would be quite a push. So. Uh, I'm not sure we'll get a move, but I will see. Certainly been pushing enough. Um, so unraveling the move that they've got in at the moment would be the logical thing to do. Everyone's still voting on whether to go short on the Euro Swiss. 80% of people want to go short Euro Swiss. I'm treating you lot like retail sentiment. Let's see, let's see what the retail crowd think about Euro Swiss. If you lot agree with them, I'm in trouble. When the website decides to load. Yep, 94% of the market are short on the Euro Swiss. We will see. Uh, why don't you trade oil? Because uh, I got kicked in the ass. Basically. You obviously weren't on the stream where I lost 9.5% on oil it's a commodity i don't trade commodities commodities are volatile beasts that will go crazy for no reason and not stop so i don't trade them they're not good for position trading they're too uh erratic he says looking at the euro swiss which had a little bit of an erratic move this week but anyway or last week but uh yeah i don't trade uh, i did i made a, i made really good money out of oil last year um, so I was trading oil a lot, but um, it hit me. But that's because I don't really understand the oil market. I don't trade commodities. I've never traded commodities. They are purely supply and demand based instruments. So uh, you have to understand the fundamentals that drive them in good detail to be able to trade them properly. Um, the reason I was trading oil last year was because we had a conflict with Russia and Ukraine kicking off or kicked off. Um, and we had a supply and demand issue with oil. So from that perspective, oil should do nothing but rise in price. And it did a lot. And then it didn't. And then it didn't a lot more. And then we looked at the levels and we said, if we break this, we're going there. It broke there, and I had to get out. So I made a loss. Because uh, I kind of half understood what was going on with the oil market. You in New Zealand? Been short for a while? You're in New Zealand? Uh, yeah, New Zealand dollar's been very, very weak. Um, I'm out. I got out of some shorts and I flipped long there. Got out of resistance. Uh, but uh, I mean, at the moment, there's no real fundamental reason for the euro to be uh, strong. Uh, but then again, there's no real fundamental reason for the New Zealand dollar to be particularly weak either. So um, I'd be looking for a pullback somewhere into there or there at some point in the next week or so. You've got a fair old distance um, until you get to the next resistance on this, which is about 275, 300 ADR away. Uh, hopefully it doesn't need to get there, but we'll see. Um, right. Afternoon, Con. So uh, I've done all the analysis, basically, all the ADRs, all the RSIs. It's all Swiss. So uh, we'll keep an eye on what goes on with the Swiss franc. Um, if we can get a nice little pullback on it, it'd be lovely. Get some profit out of that this afternoon. So the ADR analysis that I did, um, for those that weren't in here, basically, I was just looking at um, whether or not there's an advantage to using a different RSI number to... Uh, the normal RSI that I use. So I've always used an RSI 10, which is a fortnightly RSI. Um, <clears throat> so we're measuring, measuring the last 10 days worth of movement on average 
And that is what we're using to base our stops, our lot size calculations, our targeting, movement, everything. So everything works on the average daily range. And I was always used the ADR 10. So I've been looking at what's this instrument been doing roughly over the last couple of weeks. Therefore, we'll base our speculative price movement moving forward on roughly the same sort of distances. So the analysis that I've done using the position trader EA, because you can export all the ADR data, is to test different ADR uh, periods. You mean ADR? What did I say? Did I say something else? Did I say RSI or something stupid? I only use RSI and ADR. So if I didn't say ADR, I assume I said RSI. Um, ADR 10 is what I've been using. Um, so I tested the 5, the 20, and the 60 um, and plotted those on a chart. Yeah, so not RSI, ADR, average daily range. Um, so I plotted the uh, ADR levels over a, a four-year-ish test um, just to see how much difference in volatility there was. Yeah, So you can see here we got a massive spike on ADR 10. ADR 60 just kind of popped up and then popped down again. So I just wanted to see if there was a massive impact um, on the main things we focus on for position trading, which is lot size, drawdown, profit, number of trades, speed of trade, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I just wanted to see if there was a um, a big difference. Why 10 and not 14? Uh, well, I'd flip the question back and ask why 14, Ryan? Why pick a random number that isn't even based on weeks? There's only five trading days in a week. 10 is two trading weeks. 14 is two and three quarter trading weeks. Doesn't make sense, does it? Just a random number. Um, <clears throat> so those are the initial tests that I did. And then I ran tests on nine different FX pairs, exported all that data on nine FX pairs, testing ADR 10, ADR 20, ADR 40, and ADR 60. So ADR 10 is two weeks, ADR 20 is one month, ADR 40 is two months and ADR 60 is three months. So looking at the average daily range of the instrument over a two week, four week, eight week and 12 week period. So I just wanted to see what the differences were. And obviously with these tests, you can see this is the position trading EA, position trader EA taking trades. So it took a trade there, it got in one trade out, made a profit. It got in there uh, with one trade, uh, then it had to scale in took six trades in total, then got out, made a profit. Um, and it just basically monitors and exports all the data as to what the maximum drawdowns were, everything. So I then took all that data, but figured out what the minimums, the maximums, the averages and the totals were. Uh, and I tested Aussie CAD, Aussie Swiss, Aussie New Zealand, Euro Pound, Euro New Zealand, Pound US, Euro, uh, New Zealand Swiss, US CAD and US Swiss. So a nice cross section of instruments to uh, get a nice average over lots of different uh, currency pairs. So these are the results. And uh, when the video comes out, you'll see me going through pretty much what I'm doing here. But uh, the upshot is <clears throat> what I was expecting was, uh, because the ADR60 is more smooth, what I was expecting was to take more uh, lot sizes initially at a similar level. Therefore, regardless of whether there's market volatility or not, getting into less drawdown. And because spacing would have been closer to closer together, I was expecting to be able to exit positions faster. That was what my expectation was of increasing the ADR number. What actually happened was with the maximum drawdown, the testing proves that uh, an ADR 10 gets you into way less drawdown than an ADR 60. So US dollar Swiss over that four year period took two and a half K of drawdown uh, or three and a half K. Yeah. So 20 K of drawdown, 23 K of drawdown, 22 K, 41 K, 1 K, 3 K, 1 K, 3 K, 2 K in a bit. So basically from a drawdown perspective, you're actually better off using lower ADRs than you are higher. For the number of lots taken, so the total, the maximum lot size in any one position, so this one here on the pound Swiss, for example, 
it got into 6.68 lots in total on the position as a maximum. This one got into 1.96 total um, over a period of eight trades and over 17 trades there. So again, this test that was run was a basic bog standard default test with no, no drawdown control, no clever spacing, nothing. It's just literally, let's get in and get out when it's profitable. I just want to see what the impact of ADR is. Yeah. So these results, obviously, you wouldn't be in 17 trades. You would have got out of some of that. Um, <clears throat> but for the testing purposes, it just shows that there's absolutely no advantage in ADR on the lot sizing. So sometimes you get into good lot sizing with an ADR 10. Sometimes you get into good lot sizing with an ADR 40. Sometimes it was good lot sizing with an ADR 60. There's absolutely no advantage. So not what I was expecting at all there. I was expecting ADR 60 to give much lower drawdown. It's not. It's the opposite. It's what I'm using at the moment, ADR 10. I was expecting it to get me into lower lot sizing because we, our initial trade would be smaller using that ADR. You no, know, doesn't make any difference at all. Uh, the maximum number of trades doesn't matter. If you use ADR 10 to ADR 60, 17, 17, 17, 18, 13, 16, 18, yeah, 5, 10, 9, 5, 7, 7, 6, very little difference. So ADR10 actually wins out on that as well. And for profit overall, ADR60 is more profitable by a couple of grand. Yeah, look at the difference. That made 6,200 profit using ADR10. It made 6,900 profit using ADR60. The next is $700 in four years. Irrelevant, isn't it? Six grand, seven and a half. Nine grand, seven, seven. 22 grand to 13. So you get the odd anomaly where, yeah, one is better than the other, but it's ADR 10 again, not ADR 60. Um, 14 and a half grand, $13,600. Yeah. So basically, the upshot of all the testing is makes no difference what ADR you use. Pick one, doesn't matter. As I said, and as I say all the time, it isn't better or worse. It's just different, different result. So sometimes you would have been better off using an ADR 10. Sometimes you'd have been better off using an ADR 60. Sometimes you'd have been better off using an ADR 40. Other times you'd have been better off using an ADR 20. Random. No advantage in switching ADR at all. So it's a, it's a good test to do in the fact that clarifies my original findings four years ago, which was that ADR 10 is king. Um, but disappointing in a way that I didn't find a better way of doing it, which is fine. So, um, but this is a four year test. Um, so, uh, it's, and it's obviously only on nine pairs, but it's a cross section. We've got Aussie in there. We've got CAD, we've got Swiss, New Zealand, Euro, pound, everything. No yen, because yen's a bit crazy. Um, <clears throat> But uh, yeah, so just just wanted to get a cr good cross section over a very good period of time. So this is basically post COVID. As soon as COVID finished, we're testing from there. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's a good test, but there is no um, conclusion. So testing when you're doing testing of that sort of nature. Uh, when you get a result that proves there is no advantage, it gives you confidence that it doesn't matter what you do, you are still going to get into squeezes. You are still going to have periods where you're going to make loads of profit. You're still going to have periods where it's going to make losses. There is no way of using the ADR as an instrument to give you a competitive advantage, a different ADR rather. The ADR obviously is critical for measuring volatility. We need it so that we don't get in too aggressive or too light on any particular trade. We don't over leverage. But high volatility obviously um, is just as good as low volatility. And one of the interesting things is um, the differences. So if we just look at US dollar CAD, for example, yeah, going through time. Um, <clears throat> so let me just freeze panes on this so we can so you can see the uh, columns here. So this is ADR20. This one is ADR40. 
40 and this one is ADR 60. So these are the actual ADR numbers and ADR 10. So when we're measuring over a two week period, you can see this one here, for example, it was 70 pips ADR 10. At the same time, ADR 20 was 72 pips. ADR 40 was 79 and a half pips, so pretty much 80 pips. So 10 pips bigger than that. ADR 60 was 81 pips. Yeah, so the smoothed one was actually a bigger number than the volatile one because we are moving up and down in ADR a lot quicker using this than this. So if a market's been highly volatile for four months and then it calms down, we are always going to be trading what was happening three months ago rather than what's happening now. Yeah, this is more important than that. That's what that testing has kind of shown me that what you would think would be the best thing to do, smooth it out and make it more, uh, less, less jaggedy, less volatile, less fast, if you like, actually isn't the best thing to do. So if you go through these uh, and sort of whoops, scroll down, yeah, if we just go to a bit further on, 96 pips, 96 pips, 94 pips, 97 pips. So the difference between the two week average daily range and the three month average daily range is one pip, maybe two. Yeah, just no difference. Look at the trades that you get into. So it got into a trade there using ADR 10. It got into exactly the same trade using ADR 20, exactly the same trade using ADR 40, and exactly the train, same trade using ADR 60. The result was the same. It took four trades. That one took five. That one took five. But it got out pretty much the same. So, you know, it's, this, it's, it's a really interesting result for me anyway. You can see that like, it's taking the same trades. There's a trade there, got into three positions out in four days. Trade there, got into three got into one position out in four days. Trade there, got into two positions out in four days. Trade there, that one lasted 20 days, so a month. Got into nine positions in a month. Took a month to play out. Same one there got into five positions that took 18 days to play out, but it's the same trade. Look, every ADR gives you the same trade. What I was hoping to find was that because the levels would be different, one of them would be better in that it would be more consistent. It's not. So there you go. So that video will be out at three 30, um, in an hour. Um, but I thought I'd share it in here as well because uh, you guys know I've been doing the testing. So interesting. It really means I don't have to worry about it now. I can pick one at random. <clears throat> uh, afternoon, isn't it? But it's good to know. Um, it's one of those good to knows that um, there is no advantage. Uh, Swiss francs powering up nicely. No other ADR hits. So there we go. Um, so that's all we've really got for you this afternoon because there's nothing much else to look at at the moment. Um, it's one of those weeks where it's going to be not a lot to do. Bedtime. Night, Franco. Is it? Not even America. Shouldn't you have just woken up? Um, so, uh, yeah, so it, there's nothing else to look at really today apart from Swiss franc. The only thing that's moved is the Swissy. Um, the Aussies kind of back to where it was. Nothing's going on much at all there. Um, you can see everything's kind of sideways apart from the Swiss, which has had a big rally. The yen isn't really doing an awful lot. Slightly weak there on the Swiss franc again. Um, Euro's not going anywhere much apart from against the Swiss franc. Um, so, yeah, it's just a dead day today. Um, totally sideways. Pound odd kind of sums up the market today. If you're not looking at the Swiss franc, you're looking at nothing pretty much. So um, it's all Swissy today. Um, so that's the short of the day. Any Swiss franc pair? Um, and fingers crossed.
that now pulls back sort of three quarters of an ADR or so, and I can get out of uh, some nice Swiss franc profit today. Um, so pound US dollar is the only thing I bank today. The US dollar CAD position that I took yesterday um, was not an RSI extension trade. Um, it was extended, but the reason I took it was because it was a double top bounce. Um, so that's in profit at the moment, not really enough to take it off yet, and it hasn't got far enough for me to take it off yet. Um, in fact, I might put an auto TP on that. I'm going to put my TP on that um, US dollar Swiss there. The top of that propulsion move. Um, so yeah, so if I can get kind of a percent out of the Swiss franc shorts today, um, I will do. So I'm just going to monitor the PL basically. I'm not necessarily looking for each of these to get to kind of half a percent profit. If I can get a combination of three of those Swiss francs together to bank another percent, I'll bank it and just bank close the lock. So I do not really want to be shorting against the Swissy, um, but there's a very good potential short-term play, as you can see, uh, underway at the moment. Am I still trading the other two strategies, ADR and hedging? Uh, no, not the moment. There's no, there's no point in trading uh, ADR and, and I mean, the, the reason I separated those strategies out was so that people could see the, the strategies working. ADR and RSI are the same thing, pretty much. So, one or the other, and a, a RSI is my preferred strategy. It's the one I've always been trading. The um, hedging, I might start up again, um, but on full auto with drawdown control because it was doing really, really well. I just wasn't trading it properly. I wasn't trading. I wasn't doing drawdown control. Um, if it was, if it was a proper main account, I would have been a lot more on the ball, but I wasn't. So. I might start that up again because it's got a good potential. But what I want to do is um, I want to um, try and put together a strategy uh, using RSI on the new position trader EA. Um, Yeah, um, to try and do hedging, but um, I'm just trying to. I, was, I had a quick play around with it the other day using 6040, and it seemed to be okay. I can't remember what TPs I was going for. I think I was <clears throat> being a little bit more. Um, conservative with the profit targets on it when I tested it, and I think I tested it on the hourly. Let's just try that. Uh, that's January 2020. I don't want to do that because that's COVID. Uh, let's go. April. So, yeah, I was testing uh, a hedging strategy with this EA. Uh, and it worked really well <clears throat> for a long time with a lot of pairs. But then it got stuck. Um, and... Uh, have I got multi-direction on? I don't think I have. Hang on. <laughs> That's not right. No. Um, so, yeah, I was testing uh, this, trying to get a strategy working on here so that I could use this instead of the market reversal alert CA. Problem with the market reverse alert CA is sometimes those hedges got so wide apart, um, it became difficult to get out of them. So um, I was testing it using this, and uh, I got to the point where it looked really good for years on lots of instruments, but then there was one, there was a couple of squeezes, and I think it was the US dollar Swiss, um, where it got into trouble. And then I started looking into introducing drawdown control. Um, and that's as far as I got. I've got the set file saved, but it's not on this terminal. Um, that might have been it, yeah. That, 
Uh, yeah, so that's a Swiss. So there was a point where it did that, basically. It blew the account. Um, so I was using uh, drawdown control, which basically started taking a loss on the account, and then it recovered it all very, very quickly because obviously it kept the average closer. So um, I've got to play around with it, but I'd rather use this EA um, because I will be able to take manual trades on it as well. Because with hedging, you'll find, you do find that a lot of the time you'll see an obvious bounce point where you'd think that's where you want to hedge it, not where it wants to hedge it because of the relative strength index. So um, I wanted to ideally do it with this so that I could actually intervene and do some manual hedging with it. But um, I can't remember what I was using as drawdown control. It wasn't 1%. It was more than that. I think it was maybe 2 I can't remember. I'd have to test it. But it's what I'm going to do. I'm going to test it. Been pretty solid H1 meme reversion month. Yep. Yeah, good month this month. Um, so, yeah. Um, 16%. I'm still in DD at the moment, but I mean, I'm always in DD. That's, that's where I live. There we go. So that's the drawdown control underway. I think this is where it pushes. Yeah. So Obviously, with one individual instrument, exactly the same as I did with the Swiss franc push that we've just had, you take a loss. Yeah, there are instruments where you're just going to have to take a loss because it will squeeze and you can't do anything about it. But the overall portfolio, as long as you're not overexposing, um, i.e. you've only got a couple of Swiss francs on, will be fine. It's just uh, this is what and this is what you have to kind of take into account with position trading um, back tests is. You can only look at one instrument at a time. You have to amalgamate that into a portfolio because the portfolio result will be totally different to the individual result. Um, this isn't the setting I was using. I was using a different drawdown control. So where this would make a roughly a 30% loss or something in a year, the others would make up for that by making 150% or whatever. So you get the odd rogue instrument where you get a squeeze on. Um, which you just have to hemorrhage out of. Nothing you can do. But this will work for hedging as well. Um, but it needs it needs a little bit of work on it, and I, this is, I just haven't had the time at the moment because I've been doing other things, like ADR research, which has taken a good sort of two or three days to get that done, which is now done, so I can move on to other things. Uh, I've been really enjoying my strategy using RSI 10, taking only extensions on the one hour in line with the trend, the 200 EMA on the four hour chart. Cool. Everything will work and then it won't. So it doesn't matter which you use, RSI 10, RSI 14, RSI 21, at points they're always the best to use. Exactly like that ADR research has just shown. Sometimes ADR 10 is going to be better than ADR 20, ADR 40. Sometimes the RSI 10 will be better than the RSI 14, which will be better than the RSI 21. They're all going to work. And then it's how you manage that one that doesn't work. That's where it all comes into play. Like these trades I've got on at the moment, all these Swiss shorts on. Yeah, got lots of Swiss shorts on. Yeah, if they all go down and hit target, brilliant. If they don't, it's what I do when they stop going down that is the difference between making money and losing money. If I sit there and go, oh, screw it, let's just let them all play out, and the Swiss franc pushes for the next two weeks, I'm going to be in big trouble. Was ADR 150 the best spot to take it, or should I have waited for ADR 200 today? I still don't know. This could just be pulling back in a little flag. And popping off to ADR 200 this afternoon. Who knows? But yeah, ADR 10, ADR 10 on the higher time frames. When you got to uh, sorry, ADR RSI 10 on the higher time frames is you know I dropped down to an RSI 14. Uh, so if you drop down to an RSI 10, probably not the best thing to look at the Swiss franc. 
uh, like euro pound. So that's an ADR, uh, sorry, an RSI 10, got up to there. The RSI 14, it would let me click on the bloody RSI. Only got to there. So, you know, it depends. It, that's the difference between the 10 and the 14. It's very little in it. But if you prefer the 10, use the 10. Not right, it's not wrong, it's different. So, you know, I got out on that euro pound trade there, which was a lovely exit, as you can see. Um, and if you got in on that because you saw an RSI extension, RSI 10 extension, happy days for you. I didn't get an RSI 14. So there's no entry for me, but the 10 would have worked that time. But the next time the 10 you get into and it drops down and RSI resets and the market pushes up and then RSI gets up to 14 and it drops and you're in four trades when I'm getting into my first one, I'll be turning around and saying the RSI 14 is the best one. Not better, is it? It's just different. All instruments will, you can curve fit every instrument to look the best. But there will always be an instance where it's not as we know. How comes the Swiss squeeze didn't impact the H1 mean reversion account? Because uh, it didn't have trades on the Swiss. This is the downside um, to ADR, which is why for years I've not traded the ADR strategy. Um, and I prefer the uh, RSI strategy because you can get an ADR hit. So if you look at the ADRs today, so we've got an ADR on CAD Swiss. We've also got an RSI. We've got an ADR on the pound Swiss. We've got an RSI. We've got an ADR on the New Zealand Swiss. We've got an RSI. We've got an ADR on the US dollar Swiss. We haven't got an RSI. Yeah. So what you will find is a lot of the time when you get an ADR extension, if price is here, or on RSI, when that RSI hit occurs. Here, for example, perfect example, look, US dollar Swiss, right? That's a 300 ADR move. We didn't get extended on RSI, but you did get into that on ADR. ADR means that it's moved beyond its average daily range. There's a reason for that. The market was bought the crap out of it. Why is it bought the crap out of it? Because there's been a fundamental shift in the Swiss franc. It's dropped its interest rate. So should you be shorting it? No. The RSI tells you that the relative strength of that move wasn't far enough to get stretched, i.e. it's just an intraday move. It's not a continuation, a, string, a strong move. RSI measures the relative strength over a period of time. We're measuring here, we're measuring the relative strength over 21 hours. Yeah, roughly a day, which is why I use the RSI 21. It's roughly a day's worth of movement. If you have sustained movement for multiple days, you get an RSI extension. What's that mean? The banks have been buying it for days. So if they've been buying it for days, what are they going to need to do? Get out at some point. That's why I use RSI. ADR just means that today there's been something that's happened that's made it spike. There's a 50-50 chance of it doing that or that. And ADR is meant to be an intraday strategy, i.e. we're looking for a quarter to a half an ADR or a third of an ADR pullback. So these Swiss franc trades that I've got into on ADR reversals, looking for somewhere in the region of 30 odd pips. Yeah, there, 33 pips, that's half an ADR. That's really all you should be looking for because it's had a big move today because the banks are buying it. So they'll probably pull back before they start the next leg up. But you will often get RSI and ADR triggering at the same time. If price is above the 50 RSI, when the ADR happens, there's a good chance it will take you above the RSI extension a la there. You see, we were above the RSI uh, 50 level. Yeah. And then we got the move on the pound Swiss that took us above the RSI extension for a short trade. Yeah. But it didn't on the other on the US dollar Swiss. So I just prefer the RSI as a tool because it measures movement over a longer period of time, whereas um, ADR is more of an intraday measurement. 
And as we all know, people that try to day trade, trade on five minute charts and get in and out within a day, typically fail because they're just trading chop, algorithmic movement in the markets. And it's got nothing to do with price direction. It's just stuff going on. Whereas on an hourly chart, you're seeing what the day's worth of movement is and everything. Every time you go up a time frame, you're smoothing out. What's the pound Swiss doing? It's bullish, massively bullish. Now what's it doing? It's a little bit bullish. Now what's it doing? Well, it's bullish for the last couple of days. Now what's it doing? Well, it's bearish at the moment. Yeah. See, so the, the higher the time frame, which is why I always use RSI on the hourly time frame, the more smooth the price action. That is just telling me that today the Swissie has been weak. Now it's being strong. Or is it? I don't know. But when you scroll out and suddenly go there, you go like, oh, I see. Massively bullish. It's a pullback on an up leg. Market structure's long. So, um, but, you know, trading, trading both strategies is, is pointless. That's the reason in the boot camp I give multiple strategies. You pick one, but you're not meant to pick four. If you pick four, you're going to get the same entries. Same with hedging. Yeah, um, if you use uh, the hedging strategy, which is on the website for the Market Reverse Alert CA, that gets in with an RSI extension as well. So it's the same as H1M5 mean reversion, the same as ADR and hedging. It will get in on the same signal, condition and a signal. Um, and there's nothing wrong with if you want to run all strategies on different accounts and separate them out. You just have to understand, as I've proven over this month, you are crippling or quadrupling your exposure the more accounts you're trading. And the trouble is you've got to manage all of those accounts. And that's where the thing falls apart, especially for me. I couldn't handle all those accounts. I can't run the live room, run three trading accounts, monitor everything, do the Telegram stuff and everything else I do. Just not enough hours in the day. So hence, putting more money in, stick to the old strategy and just do the one thing. It's a position trading strategy. You are trading a position. I am short on the pound Swiss. If I get short on the pound Swiss on another account, what's the point? I am short the pound Swiss already. If this pushes up, I will double my losses and exposure. Yes, I will double my profits, but we're not in it for massive profits. We're in it to make money. That's the danger area when it pushes against you and squeezes you, isn't it? So, but if you look at the uh, Swiss pairs on the hourly uh, time frame, so that's obviously where the squeeze was, uh, where the news event was. This is the squeeze that started in the beginning of February. As you can see, I had a trade there, a trade there, but I'm out of them. Uh, on the hourly, whereas on ADRs, you would have had an entry there, but you wouldn't have been in that. So the ADR would have got you in there and there. You should have been out on that, really. Um, that might have been an ADR. Ninety one. Yeah, so that would have been an ADR hit. So you'd have been in on that, which was an RSI extension, which I was also in on off of that uh, and out. But the real killer was the Euro Swiss. And again, Euro Swiss, um, there was an ADR hit there. So that is where the ADR strategy entered the Euro Swiss and it got squeezed all the way up to here where it was in big drawdown before the news event killed it. Yeah. RSI. That was my first entry. I only had one trade on it and out. There was no signal before that. There was no signal after it until the new spike, which worked out beautifully. So this, see what the difference is between ADR and RSI. It took three days to get that, or two days to get that move, whereas RSI, ADR triggers one day. And that is the start of a squeeze because there was a fundamental shift. But it, you know, they're just different strategies. ADR is way more dangerous. I've always said it. ADR is much more dangerous strategy because you're turning an intraday trade 
into a position trade over multiple days or weeks, which is which is riskier because there is there's no extension. The banks haven't moved this thing, right? Any any instrument could be going sideways, right? For or or even moving down like this for weeks, and then all of a sudden you get a spike and an ADR hit. You wouldn't get an RSI extension there but you would get a signal to go short on ADR. If that is because of an interest rate drop, that's going nowhere but there. So what you're doing is you are getting in short against the fundamental news, whereas the relative strength index will require this to have pushed for two or three days before it even starts the first position. By that time, that ADR move in the two following days will be ready to pull back, which is why RSI normally has two to three positions most of the time. Again, you can test all of this. If you go into um, the strategy tester and, you know, this, this, uh, the spreadsheet. So when you get this spreadsheet out, it's got ADR, balance, equity, short profit, long profit, open lots, short, open lots, long, total open trades, trades, close profit, and the open drawdown. So that's what you get out as an export from the EA run this test with RSI and see what the maximum total trades is. Run the test again with ADR and see what the maximum total trades is. You'll probably find you will have probably a similar amount of open trades because RSI will still get squeezed at points, but you'll have way more times that number appears on the ADR export than you will on the RSI one because you'll get on the back of the wrong news basically so you can test all of this this is the beauty of this ea you can test it all look at that that trade there it's nine positions so it got into nine positions which is a fairly hefty position isn't it? but the time 70 days it was in that trade i mean i would have done drawdown control and aggressive drawdown control and all sorts of stuff on it in that time but that's two whole months it was in that trade maximum drawdown on it was only 1600 uh, no two and a half two and a half grand was the maximum drawdown it got to which is five percent 50k account but you know, uh, you could have had in there multiple ADR here. I said, I don't know, you need to go and test it, but different strategies. Um, you know, and this is the beauty of the position trader EA and why I wanted to build this uh, so that you can take trades like this, this US dollar CAD that I've taken. It's not an RSI trade. It's a double top bounce. I've spotted an opportunity for a double top bounce. So you take it. Um, it might be totally, totally wrong, and this thing will suddenly scream up there, and I'll be going, why the hell did I get in down there? It's not even an RSI extension. But look at what this has been doing. Three or well, four massive propulsion gaps to the downside as targets. Yeah, so you can, you know, you can't obviously test it. We can test this because you can do it in the tester. That's the other thing. For those of you who don't know, this has been updated, the EA, so that you can now trade with the buttons in the tester. So if you want to test any strategy, you can do that now. Then just go, I'm going to go short, and then watch how it would have worked out. I just took a short at random, so probably a bad thing to do. There we go, we got out of it. Um, but yeah, so you can, you know, if you want to say, right, I'll go, I'm going to wait for it to get to that double top up there. If we get to that double top, I'll short it again. Or if we get down to that low there, I'll, sh I'll long it. Yeah, so it's short it there and get out down here somewhere. Didn't work out. Turned it into a position, exit. So let's have a crack at that level up there. I'll have a look at that level there. It's pretty good. It's 
stuck in the middle of nowhere. Let's go short there. And scale in if it goes up to the other high. Didn't need to, go out. So nowhere. There's not really any levels to look at there, is there much? Nice double top gone in. Somewhere around that area there. See if we take a short up there. If he gets there. Or we could take double bottom bounce. Missed it. Sure, anyway. Out. Top coming up there. Short. Out. See, it's just, it's, it's so nice being able to backtest your own strategy. So if you've got any strategy under the sun, just trade it in here. Admittedly, the controls are a little bit jerky, yeah? So, you know, it, it's, this is the thing I hate about the um, strategy tester is this speed control. Like, it's like 1 to 31 are the same speed. 32, lightning. Like, why not have each increment working properly? I might have a look at it, see if there's a way that I can... Um, uh control the speed of this uh because that would be a really handy thing to have so we're just coming up to a long uh, uh double top uh, let's just go short there we go let's go short there so scale in exit the other thing you can do as well obviously this automatically does the position trading for you yeah so how much money did i make there it's not bad is it just made fifteen hundred dollars. So the other thing you can do is, uh, if you set the additional um, the distance between trades, set that to twenty five, right? So twenty five ADR. Yeah. Hit the start button, right? So what you will now be able to do is manually scale in to your trades. So if you take a trade and it doesn't work out, let's say we go short for the sell stop. Right, and it pushes up. I'm going to go short again. Yeah, it takes the second one with the lot multiplier, but I'm manually scaling in. So you can test manual position trading. It will get out automatically for you. Go short again up there because we're up at a potential high. Yeah, and it shows you the drawdown as well on your account. It's another good thing. Uh, scaled out, drawdown control, automatically done. Take another short up there. And it's pushing down when it pushes down. I'm just watching the PL. So I was just going to say if the PL gets down to a level where you'd think, screw this, I'm out. You can hit close and just close all the trades out. So, you know, it's just it's a complete manual back testing system as well, all built in, which is even better. Thank you for the tip, Peter. Very much appreciated. £10. Wow. Thank you very much. I have to give you a tip as you reminded me what an idiot I am. <laughs> Did I say that? Uh, after two failures, I'm definitely stick with RSI only. ADR is good for range bounds, uh, but on trends, it's a pain. Yeah. Does gets you in too quick sometimes. Sometimes, this is the thing though. ADR strategy in February, I think it was, outperformed hedging and I think it was hedging it outperformed as well. It outperformed everything, I'm pretty sure. Um, because the market in February was like that. That is exactly what you want to trade. ADR, reversals, big push up into resistance, out. Big push down into resistance, support, out. Just keep doing that. But when the market goes into, the and the problem with the Euro Swiss specifically was that. Yeah, it's the these are the absolute worst conditions for position trading. It's the squeeze with no pullback. Literally, there was no pullback. Yeah, we're, this isn't market structure. 
Market structure does that. And it does this and that and that. It's up and down and up and down. It's banks moving and profit taking, banks moving and profit taking. This was basically a mass evacuation from the Swiss franc in anticipation of an interest rate drop. Didn't give you an exit. Depending where you got in, I did get an exit. You know, this thing is, is this is where backtesting fails uh, because you are going to get a different result in backtesting um, because you will do different things. You will see different things. You will make different decisions based on your portfolio, which you can never backtest. Uh, I've also been position trading the US indices with buys only. Yeah, that's a good idea. Since history shows last year, time going up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I've got that strategy for the S&P 500 for the market reverse alerts, yeah, which is buy only, always buy only on uh, indices. I don't particularly trade them anymore. They, I used to, um, used to be a really good little pension fund account, but I stopped trading it. I stopped it and actually started putting it into a proper pension fund, which is very boring and much lower return, but safer. Uh, I tried to test, I tried to button test in the tester and mine wasn't coming up. Uh, you need to, there's a, there's an input down here in miscellaneous settings called, uh, show, show trade buttons for use in tester it needs to be set to true. Yeah. They, they will only come up. The reason being is, um, behind the buttons, there's a lot of on tick logic. So every time the market makes a tick, it's monitoring and doing calculations on the buttons. So the reason I've got that set to on and off is if I left it on all the time in the tester, it would slow down back testing dramatically. So you can, I have it off as default because most people want to just back test the strategies and variations on the strategies. If you want to do manual trading, turn that on and it will slow, it will slow down the tester. So, but you've got to turn it on for those to appear. Yeah, walk, yeah, February was walking on water and then March slapped hard. It slapped me hard as well. It's the biggest loss I've taken, the biggest loss I've taken ever. Um, <clears throat> but I took it. You could hold on to it, uh, but... I mean, if you look at the respite that it's given, if you were squeezed as, as the ADR strategy, you were squeezed here. When that happened, you needed to be out. And I was out on that spike. That's where all the loss occurred. That's all you've had as a pullback, back to where you were before, which was in a squeeze. And now it's gone further. So, you know, it's just one of those, uh, one of those instances um, but, you know, people have said to me, <laughs> loving it, uh, absolutely killing it with the ADR strategy. They're not in this because they didn't get in there. They got in here and they've done that and they're out and they're like, wow, this is brilliant. Whereas if you got in two weeks earlier, you're like, holy crap, or three weeks earlier, however long it is. But this is what I keep saying about like prop firm evaluations if you start a prop firm evaluation there and you start a prop firm evaluation there and you start a prop firm evaluation there you will get three totally different results with exactly the same strategy with exactly the same settings because the strategy and the settings have nothing to do with what you make money wise or lose money wise or whether your strategy works or doesn't work or whether it's got a 70 percent strike rate most of the time or this week it has a 20 percent strike rate all of that is affected by what happens the day after you start trading. Because if the market suddenly goes, hey, I'm going to do exactly what your strategy requires to make 10%, you'll make 10%. If the market does exactly the opposite and does what the market needs to do that week, but your strategy happens to hit a stop loss 10 times in a row, you will lose 10%. That's a pass. That's a fail. What's the variance? The market. The strategy has nothing to do with making money. All about what the market does when you execute the strategy, which is why backtesting for 99% of strategies is useless and fails. 
because you're backtesting on something that's never going to be repeated in the future. Nothing that side of the line is going to happen again, ever. No two days will ever be the same. So whatever you do here is going to give you an idea of what would have happened in the past. Yeah? Can't do anything about it. That's just what it is, which is why any kind of strategy that uses a stop loss, where you have put it through the optimizer and figured out the best TP and uh, stop variation to make profit, will always fail in the future. Because what made a profit there on each of those days is not happening again. But if you can do a system parameter permutation test where that stop, that stop, that stop, that stop, that stop, that TP, that TP, that TP, that TP, and that TP, all made money, that will work. They are like rocking horse poo, finding one of those. It's a chocolate fire guard. Doesn't exist. Useless. Yeah, so... It's all down to market, what the market does. And this is where your skill and intuition as a trader comes in and your discretion as a trader comes in. I identified the Euro Swiss was an, a dead duck. I got out. I had no choice on the hedging account because the hedging account got margin called. It was up 87% when it got margin called. Up 87. 13% uh, away from doubling the account in three months. But then it got margin called. By that. If that hadn't have happened, that would have doubled by now. But, you know, it's all ifs, then, when, but, you know, hindsight, useless. Doesn't help you. But this is where your, um, your extensions and strategies come in to their own. If you use an 80 instead of a 70, you're going to get into a lot less squeezes. If you do that, though, you're going to get a lot less trades. It's a, it's a profit versus um, drawdown. It's always the battle, profit versus drawdown all the time. Isn't it? So on your recent VPS video, you mentioned you're using 15-minute for entries. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, it's just, I'm just using 15-minute for entries at the moment. Um, you could use five. It doesn't matter. Um, I just use 15 at the minute. Still H1 RSI extensions, but 15-minute entry. The, uh, the idea is if you look at a five minute chart, look at today, for example. So that is the entry that I've got with a 15 MA. That is the entry you'd have got with a market reversal alerts indicator. The uh, Sorry, that's the five minute chart. Uh, let's. So that is your uh, five, your five minute entry on the Euro Swiss is there. Let me draw a, a line and just demonstrate the point. So that is your five minute entry on the 9MA. That is your reversal alert entry. And that is your 15 MA entry with spread. Is this the one I took manually? This is the one I took manually, sorry. But anyway, you get the point, right? So let me zoom in on it. So that line is your nine uh, MA on the five minute chart. That is the market reversal alerts entry. That is the nine MA on the 15 minute chart. Yeah. Bit more confirmation is what I'm looking for. That's why I'm using the 15 minute rather than the five. The entry will still happen, um, but I'm looking for a bit more confirmation. Yeah, so the 15 often is less aggressive than the five. It was always less aggressive than the five, um, but it's often a little bit more aggressive than the uh, market reversal alerts indicator as well. So if you look at the market reversal alerts indicator on the five minute chart, the entry is the same as the 15 minute. Yeah, there's not a lot in it. Eight pips. In the grand scheme of things, it's irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant. So use whatever you want. Use the five, use the 15. I'm using the five. 
Um, the only reason I'm using the five is because I've done all my te- uh, fifteen is um, because I've done all my testing on the fifteen. Uh, but the, do the testing on the five as well. Uh, if you do a test, uh, I don't know. Let's do a test in. Uh, let's go 2024 Jan- January. So let's go from the beginning of this year on the Aussie Swiss, or let's choose something that's a little bit less volatile, like the US dollar CAD. Um, so this is a couple of months on the 15 minute time frame. Not even sure we're going to get an entry. Let's have a look. US dollar CAD has moved, isn't it? So it should be right. So this is a 15 minute test. When it decides to work, okay. So there's what one, two positions there, three positions maybe. Five minute time frame. Let's go build the data quickly. Obviously, the test isn't going to take longer because it's five minute time frame. It's actually the same. Very little in it. So. But test it yourself. Uh, you know, just just flick between the two and look at the moving average. So this is this is the nine EMA that I'm using. The reason I like it uh, on the fifteen is it has to just give you that little bit more. There's more selling involved to get over the line. Uh, and what you find is as well, when you're position trading, if you've got an entry and you've taken a short and it's pushed against you and you get above that next entry line, it needs a little bit more of a push to get you in rather than if it does that, you'll get in on a five minute time frame, But you won't get in on a 15 there without a little bit more of a push. So. At the end of the day, it it makes very little difference. Like I say, it's difference between five or ten pips on virtually all instruments. So, Edward, uh, I stay eight weeks short on the pound Swiss. On the pound Swiss. Yeah, I mean that would have been very similar to the Euro Swiss, but. Um, I mean, it depends how you got in. But if you got in on RSI extension, those were the trades in the last uh, two months on the pound Swiss. Two trades, in, out, in, out. Four positions, three positions, done. You know, this is the thing. It's, it's all about... How you what you do as a trader? These targets, I don't know what the profit was on these targets, but um, I targeted that propulsion move, which is where I got out, and that propulsion move worked. Uh, this one, uh, I guess that was probably half a percent profit, which is wh- where I get out usually, somewhere between a quarter to a half percent profit. Yeah, if you're You know, position trading isn't about getting in and waiting for it to completely drop in your direction. It's about getting in and making money. The longer you hold, the more possibility there is of the market pushing against you. You want to be in and out, in and out as often as possible. And the ones that don't work, you wait to get out with a small amount of profit. We're not looking with position trading to make more money than anybody else. We are looking to lose less money. Than everybody else. Yeah. So if I get into a position, into a trade, and it doesn't work out, I have to take a second. If I get into a trade and it works out, I get out and I put it in here. If I get into the second position and it gets back to where my first position was, I get out and I put it in here. Yeah. So this one, I don't make any money on this one, I do. If I take a third position and it pushes down and I make a quarter of a percent profit, it goes over here. What have I done in all three of those instances? Made money. Not a lot of money, but what haven't I done? Stopped out, stopped out, made one trade, which paid for that one and still made a loss. 
That's the difference. We're eliminating the loss by banking a small amount of money consistently, which is why you're never going to make Lamborghini money doing this. But that's why no one does make Lamborghini money, because you can't make Lamborghini money. Otherwise, it's just gambling, isn't it? So if you get in <clears throat> and you don't get out, so if you, if you got in here and then added there, and then it flew against you, you added, added, and you didn't exit when it gave you a quarter of a percent to half a percent profit, and you thought, right, this is it, it's coming back down to here. Yeah, you would have still been in it, and you'd have taken another position there, another position there. You wouldn't have been out on that. You'd still be in it, and you'd be in trouble. Got to get out. Sometimes you can't. And the times when, like I was on the Euro Swiss, when you're there, you have to take the loss. It's a big loss. Wiped out a quarter of profit. It's huge. But, you know, um, it happens. You know, I have losing months. Um, every year I have two to three losing months. Every year. You know, go back through the live streams. Every year there's two to three losing months. Um, this was a losing quarter, and it's the first losing quarter I've ever had. But I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people uh, who are struggling at the moment this year um, for everything. You know, every strategy is struggling this year because the market conditions are just not normal. It's weird. It's a weird thing. It's just not normal at the moment, is it? Intraday trading. I think somebody posted um, in the Telegram group this morning. Uh, Uh, retracer, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, he was watching Tom Hurgard's stream this morning or listening to Tom Hurgard. I don't think he does visual, does he? It's only audio. Um, uh, and he's done some analysis on the DAX. Uh, and this year, um, the ATR or the ADR, basically the range on the DAX is down 30%. Or is it 30% of its normal? Yeah. So in the first hour of the market trading, it's down 30% on normal. Every strategy that uses any kind of um, momentum to trade, any momentum breakout strategies, anything like that, they will all fail in, an in, in, a, in a condition of the market where ATR is restricted, which is why we use ADR to trade. If ADR is dropping, we need to drop our expectations. We need to drop our targets. We need to drop the distance we scale in at. We need to drop everything. Um, whereas if you've got a strategy which is working on a fixed ratio, so if you are risking X per point, for example, if I'm risking $10 a point of movement on an index, if the index moves down, everything I do moves down. My risk goes up by 30%. My profitability drops by 30%. That makes a big negative impact on your strategy, which is why you've got to use ATR and ADR. No one in their right mind should ever be using pips as a measurement of distance. You use the average true range of a period of time or the average daily range of movement over all time or over a longer period of time. If you're trading on charts which are above five or 15 minutes, you've got to be able to see what contraction and expansion is going on in the market. If you were trading the S&P 500, Last year, um, before the bear volatile market started, you were looking at ADRs like that. When the bear volatile market started, the ADRs went up to that. If you're using the same strategy there as you were there, you're dead. Absolutely dead. Can't do it. So, uh, <clears throat> it's just one of those uh, one of those nuances you learn, which is why I teach it. And the first, you know, it's what I say. The very first. Uh, video in the boot camp is about how to measure success. Um, how to measure your trading success, yeah? Forget pips. Everybody teaches you to use pips. I was watching a video today, actually. Um, I was trying to figure out something coding-wise to do with the ADR, because I was trying to get a different export out. And I was trying to find something. And I found this um, channel, which uh, this guy had built some EAs and it just so happened that he was trying to do a similar sort of calculation to me, which is why I found it. 
Um, and I was watching his video, and everything he does is based on pips. So all of his uh, his EA, which was a forex EA, and it had an input for pips for a stop loss and pips for a take profit. And he ran a test across one instrument, and then he moved it onto another instrument, and it gave him a similar result. He moved it onto another instrument and gave him a similar result. And I was like, now go and run that over COVID, post COVID, where the ADRs are like this. Yeah. That 20 pips you were using as a stop loss, that will happen in one five-minute candle. It used to take an hour to do that. Yeah, you can't use pips, which is why this is what is in the first video. You switch to percentage return and you switch to ADR because you have to measure the volatility of the instrument and the market. And that changes as the market changes. Yeah, When the Swiss franc interest rate dropped, what's happened? Bang. Yeah. What's going to start happening in today? Look at these days, yeah? Look at the tiny little days, tiny little days, tiny little days. Massive day, massive day, massive day, massive day. We've had two, right, no ADR hits. ADR, 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 ADR. Four ADR hits in a row. None for weeks. Because the fundamentals have shifted. The Swiss franc drops its interest rate by a quarter of a percent. Didn't tell anyone about it. Everybody's trading the Swissy. Yeah, volatility's changed. The strategy that we're trading here isn't going to work anymore. You have to adjust. The ADR on this thing is going through the roof. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not sitting up at 80 to 100 within the next week. We're sitting at 66 at the moment. Back here, we're sitting at 40, 45. Totally different conditions. Got to change. Got to adapt. I've no idea why I was even talking about that. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I was over leveraged and the distance between the entries was too close. Yeah. Done the mistake you mentioned so many times. Exactly. Yeah. So you've learned from that. It's a painful lesson, but you learned from it. The three things that kill traders are distance between trades, initial size of your trade, and lot multiplier being too big, basically. So all those things go to uh, kill your account. But distance between trades and initial over leveraging, those are the two things. If you start off with 1% risk instead of 0.25% risk and something pushes against you by 3 ADR, that's going to be four times as painful as that. You've got to try and survive the market, basically. That's the job. Uh, so bear with me one second. So the guy come to collect my thing, but hopefully my wife's dealing with it. I'll get a shout at the door in a minute. Um, <clears throat> Euro Swiss, uh, pain in my ass at the moment, minus 9%. Yeah, got to do DD control. Yeah, so I bet this is, if you're doing DD control, I've cut it. So if you want to hold it and stay in it, you know, this, there's a good chance that this will potentially pull back. When you're looking at the hourly time frame, yeah, that is what I think possibly will happen. It may even just do that. But go up a time frame or two. Look at this massive extension. There's a high probability of a pullback on this extension. Yeah, in the same way as we got a pullback here, or if you look at that entire thing, a pullback there. Yeah. That is easily on the cards, isn't it? Even if this is going to continue. The 24.72 is, uh, is where we pull back to. Yeah, so there is a chance that that will come down, and this is going to be kind of a M pattern reversal, but I would watch the 24.72, and that's where I'll be looking for a bounce back out to continue a leg up. All it's going to take is Lagarde to come out next week and say, do you know what? We're also going to reduce our interest rates before June down there. It literally, it can turn on a dime. Uh, the other thing that can happen as well is that the US dollar continues to push against the yen and the Japanese intervene. That's going to shake up every market because the entire movement of uh, money is going to change from all other currencies into the Japanese yen. For you to put money into the Japanese yen, you have to extract it from other currencies. Come out the euro. Uh, there's lots of things that can affect it, but at the end of the day, it's your portfolio. It's your uh, drawdown. And you have to manage your comfort levels individually. 
Uh, afternoon, Nizamba. New here. The position trading EA looks great. I may put, must I put the MA indicator on every chart? No. Uh, it doesn't require any indicators to trade. It just trades on its own. It doesn't use indicators. It uses the indicator, the moving average indicator, but it doesn't, you don't need it on the chart. EAs just do calculations. Any indicator that comes as standard within your MetaTrader platform is there. It doesn't have to be on the chart to actually for the um, EA to use it. It's just if you want to see it. Yeah, so I have this little 9MA uh, on here just as a reference thing now, but I don't want to see it because I don't use it. Um, so I just hide it. Because I'm I'm only using it really to uh, confirm entries at the moment, just to make sure everything's working properly. I'd like to start keeping track of any positions that I end up in four or more trades to see what's similar between them. You can do that in a back test, Daisy. Uh, if you run a back test, um, you can see how many trades are taken on the spreadsheet. So the export. Uh, that's what this column is, the total trades. So just run uh, a back test of whatever strategy you're running. You can see there that got up to three. So you could basically do a conditional format in there and say, I would like a rule where the cell is higher than four. And I want to make those red. So that will immediately highlight any positions that you got into four or more trades on. Most of them, it looks like in this case. <laughs> what is this? Swiss franc. There you go. New Zealand dollar Swiss. They're always the Swissy. We know it squeezes, but it's also very profitable, isn't it? Sometimes. But you can do that in the um, in the export. So there's one that was three. So you could, uh, if you do that conditional rule, you could also add a new rule into there, um, saying if the cell value is lower is uh, less than or equal to three, make it green. I only need one, one that says if it's not zero, because you can't actually see them, but I'm not going to teach you how to use Excel. It's not my job. <laughs> Google, very handy for Excel. Uh, right. Um, I'm just going to monitor these, um, these Swiss franc trades that I've got on. Uh, I've got suddenly gone into four exposures on the Swissy, so I, I'm not convinced by this price action at the moment. Uh, so I might uh, jump ship on these if they start to get a little sideways because there's probably a possibility we're going to do a flag break type move. So uh, I'll just monitor these. I'm not going to hold all of these, but if I can get sort of like $200, $300 out of these this afternoon, I will do. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> Excel is one of the best things for um, trading analysis. And it's very old school, obviously, but uh, for data manipulation, it's absolute king. You can do so much stuff so quickly in Excel. Um, and just for quickly finding things like that, how many trades were over four? So quick. Especially with a position trader, yeah? Because obviously um, it's... Uh, Uh, allows you to get that export. I was just going to quickly see if um, that video is released on YouTube yet. Yeah, there you go. So which ADR is best? Weekly, monthly, quarterly. So that is the um, video that I uh, kind of covered earlier with the ADR research. So that's up there now to have a look at if you want to. But if you're in it, you've just kind of seen the outcome. So I wouldn't spend 22 minutes watching it because basically the outcome is. All right, um, I'll leave it there today. Um, so tomorrow I am back uh, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. 
Um, we've got the Aussie CPI numbers tomorrow. So uh, that basically hopefully will shake up the Australian dollar. But this week is going to be quite flat, I think. Quite difficult to make money out of this week. But we'll see. So Aussie um, tomorrow CPI figures. If we get negative CPI on that, we'll get a drop. If we get positive CPI on that, we might get a pop. But very difficult to say and call what that's going to be. So we'll have to just wait and see what happens with it. Um, uh, apart from that, there's no other news tomorrow. We've got Waller speaking tomorrow evening. So it's another no news day. So I'm coming on at 8 o'clock tomorrow. We'll have a look at what the CPI impact has been. Um, if you've got any Aussie stuff that's on and you've got profit on it, uh, I haven't at the moment. I've only got the one Aussie trade on at the moment. New Zealand dollar will also be affected by the Aussie move. Um, so I've just got the one Aussie trade on at the moment on Aussie New Zealand. Tiny little bit of profit. Um, Hopefully, it's going to come down tomorrow. Had a nice big push. It's about time we got a correction. So, back down into there. Um, so, we'll see what happens. But uh, we'll have a look at that tomorrow morning. And then we'll obviously analyze the whole market. I think tomorrow we'll just go through all the FX pairs, have a look at them, see what they're all doing, uh, and go from there, really. So, anything you need, I'll be in Telegram or Discord. Um, it's just given me a really good idea this afternoon for creating a new video for the position trader EA to show people how to trade other strategies. If anybody's got any other strategies they're using, um, actually, I've got loads of strategies I can use. I'm just thinking because I just wanted to demonstrate some strategies basically with a position trader EA, just this like Bollinger Band ones or something like that. I'll, pick. I'll figure it out. It'd be a good video to do to show people how to use the back tester for manual strategy testing. Anyway, I'll think about that later. All right, um, so have a good day. Anybody needs anything, let me know. Thanks again, Peter, for that £10 tip. That was very much appreciated. Thank you very much for that. And uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, and I'll hopefully see you guys then. Have a good one.